excellent day to you out there and welcome once again to Women on the Watch powered by the Shapers Act. Women on the Watch is aimed at exposing time-tested principles for modern day application to personal and relationship challenges. My name is Wonola Detayo, the Shaper. Today, we will be commencing a series of episodes that are dedicated to our fathers. Why? Because the month of June is when typically Father's Day is celebrated all over the world. And therefore, in this series, our intention is to interrogate the subject of fatherhood so that we can look at the attendant issues, whether desirable or undesirable. The purpose is to learn crucial lessons that will help with the development of fatherhood because of the impact that fatherhood has on children, on families, on societies, on churches, and in our nations at large. The overall theme of the series is titled Fatherhood Portraits. Fatherhood Portraits. We will be examining various portraits of fathers, both desirable and undesirable. And then there will be lessons that we can draw that fathers of today can apply to practical fatherhood issues of today. Today's particular episode is titled The Indulgent Father. The Indulgent Father. And our case study shall be King David, the dad. Our Bible text is taken from 1 Kings chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. And I'll be reading from the New International Version. Now, Adonijah, whose mother was Haggith, put himself forward and said, I will be king. So he got chariots and horses ready with 50 men to run ahead of him. His father had never rebuked him by asking, why do you behave as you do? He was also very handsome and was born after Absalom. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you, the father of all fathers. We know nothing about fatherhood, but you know all things. And so, Father, we ask, O oh God, that you will use these lips to speak into the hearts of fathers, present, fathers, to be, sons, and everyone who has one impact or the other on fatherhood. We pray, O oh God, that your word will shed light into every darkness concerning this subject, and that at the end, hear us will be blessed, nations will be blessed, families will be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a look at the story of King David the dad, as exposed in 2 Samuel chapter 13, verses 1 to 39. According to the Hebrew Bible, David is described as the king of the united monarchy of Israel and Judah. David was recorded to have had seven wives, 19 sons, and one daughter. According to 2 Samuel chapter 5 and verse 13, David took more concubines and more wives from Jerusalem, and he had more sons and more daughters that were born unto him. Therefore, ultimately, we may not be sure of the exact number of children that David fathered. Amnon was David's first son. And one day, Amnon discovered that he had become obsessed with the idea that he was in love with Sema, his half-sister. Amnon was so consumed with this strange, lustful obsession with Tamar that he confided in his cousin Jonadab, who devised a terrible plan 
for Amnon. Amnon thereafter approached his father David, faking an illness, and requested his dad to send his half-sister to bake him some cakes. David simply indulged Amnon and asked Tamar to go visit her half-brother and to do the needful. Unfortunately, Amnon's plan worked. Amnon not only raped his half-sister Tamar, who was a virgin, but more importantly, threw Tamar away from his apartment immediately after the incident. Tamar left Amnon's chambers in shame with the realization that her prospects of marriage as a princess was ruined forever. Tamar proceeded immediately to her brother Absalom to complain and Absalom accepted Tamar in. David heard about this terrible crime that was committed within his family and yet he was furious, did nothing about it. For two years, Absalom and Tamar watched David as the father do nothing to console Tamar and nothing to confront Amnon. During these two years, Absalom, the brother of Tamar, came up with a terrible plan. And that plan led to the murder of his brother Amnon. Now, once this crime was committed, Absalom sent himself on self-exile to Geshur for three solid years. In these three years, David's heart started to long for his son Absalom and eventually Absalom was brought back home. After Absalom's return, David refused to engage with Absalom for another two years until Absalom practically blackmailed David's servant to force his way to see his father. Unfortunately, Absalom decided to take his father's throne forcibly, thereby committing the first coup d'etat in the Bible. And eventually, it led to Absalom's death. David was bitter for Absalom, his son, in 2 Samuel chapter 18, verse 33. He cried, Oh, my son, Absalom, my son, my son, Absalom, if only I had died instead of you. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. It is sad to note that King David lost two sons and had an embittered and abandoned only daughter in his legacy of indulgent fatherhood. Our prayer is that God will grant all fathers to have a strong sense of responsibility so that they can stand in their places as fathers to teach and to train their children in the way of the Lord. We pray that none of our fathers will bear the kind of sorrow and pain of losing their children. Welcome back. What a sad story of the impact and the effects of indulgent and neglectful fatherhood. Fathers, are so significant because their decisions and their actions are, even their inactions, will not only affect them as individuals, but these actions, inactions, decisions, and indecisions have untold impact on their families and all the members of the society who are observing these fathers and leaders as they act. In this episode of Indulgent Fatherhood, we will look at three things. Number one, what is the portrait of an indulgent father? Number two, what are the consequences of indulgent fatherhood? And then finally, we will ask ourselves, what might be the antidote or the remedies for indulgent 
fatherhood. Before we do this, I'd like to take a short break. Please stay tuned. We'll be back with you very shortly. Hello, expectant mothers. Do you know that shaping your child's destiny begins long before birth? The womb is a place where children can be blessed and equally a place where children can be maimed. The Pregnancy Watch by Wanuola Adetayo is a uniquely conceived tool designed to support you in active participation in this process. Presented in an easy-to-read devotional format, this best-selling book combines the physical and spiritual insights backed by medical research to equip and empower you to fulfill the awesome responsibility of birthing new life. Dr. Yinka Moshoro, a consultant pediatrician, cardiologist and public health physician, has this to say. The Pregnancy Watch is a well-crafted and skillfully blended piece on the biological and spiritual development of a child in the mother's womb. It is for this reason that this book is highly recommended for every woman trusting God for a child and those who are already pregnant. Visit www.theshapersarc.org slash books or call 0812-402-0538 to place an order. The portrait of indulgent fatherhood. The first thing that we see in the portrait of the indulgent fatherhood is that indulgent fathers yield to children's requests without any restraint. We saw in the story of King David that he agreed to send Tamar to bake cake for Amnon, the half-brother, in 2 Samuel 13, 6-7. And that is what led to the rape. He didn't question the son that why must you have your daughter, I mean your sister bake cake just because you are ill? So indulgent fathers would tend to yield to their children's requests. The same thing happened when Absalom said, King, I want you to follow me for sharing. The king said, no, I won't follow you. He said, then please release my brother. Listen to what King David said in 2 Samuel 13. Verse 27, but Absalom urged him. So he sent with him Amnon and the rest of the king's sons. If only he had insisted, maybe Amnon's life might have been saved. The second thing we notice in the portrait of indulgent fatherhood is a neglect of the duty to hold children accountable for bad behavior. Parents are not just there to give children all they want without holding children accountable. We discover in the story of David, Amnon was not held accountable. He raped his sister, yes. David was furious, yes. But David did not do anything. 1 Samuel 13, 21. 1 Samuel 13, 21 says, when the king heard all this, he was furious. But that was the beginning and end of everything. He did nothing. For two years, David neglected to engage or discipline Amnon. We also notice that Absalom was not held accountable for the premeditated murder of his brother. Read the story in 2 Samuel 13, verses 32 and verse 37. Okay? A third thing in the portrait of indulgent fatherhood is abdication of duty to execute justice and fairness between siblings. Every father, we know there will be sibling contention, there will be sibling rivalry, but it is the duty of the father to establish justice, fairness between siblings. Amnon was not even made to apologize. Amnon was not even made to restitute. Therefore, the bitterness was held in the heart of Absalom, in the heart of Tamar, even in the heart of Tamar's mother. Absalom was not made to restitute or apologize for murdering Amnon. At least he could have gone to say, I'm so sorry to the mother. But David failed to hold the child accountable for their misdeeds. A fourth thing in the portrait of indulgent fatherhood is a preoccupation with external success. Many fathers, they have failed at home. Yet, in the outward, they look exciting. And so they get preoccupied with what they think that they're doing that is succeeding. So we see David very busy with his duty as king, with his duty as judge. For two years, he could not make out time to deal 
with Amnon's rape, and yet he continued being a good judge to Israel. For three years when Absalom returned, David continued judging Israel, yet failed to engage with Absalom. Okay, so a preoccupation with external success is what we see in the portrait of fatherhood. Let's look at a fifth part of the portrait. And that is that fathers who are indulgent are unmindful about the impact of their personal and moral failure on their children. You know, this same King David, he had moral failures. He took on his own soldier's wife, Uriah's wife, Bathsheba. The children were watching 2 Samuel chapter 11. David even went further to commit murder. He organized for the murder of Uriah. Everybody knew 2 Samuel chapter 12. You see, when a father continues and does not deal with his own moral failure, it means that he is underestimating the impact that it would have on the children. And then they would tend to think, well, because I'm not so perfect, so let me indulge the children. So that's another portrait of indulgent fatherhood. Last but not the least is that indulgent fathers, they focus on ruling externally at the expense of the family. Now, what are the consequences of indulgent fatherhood as portrayed in the story of David, the dad? Number one, a great consequence of indulgent fatherhood is that the children have a sense of entitlement. It's called an entitlement syndrome. We could see from the scripture that we read, Adonijah, because Absalom was dead, he was now the eldest son of King David. So as far as he was concerned, he was entitled to the throne as the eldest son. And yet his father was alive. It is recorded in 1 Kings 1, 5 that his father had never denied him anything. So he had an entitlement syndrome. That's why he got up, got on horses, and began to organize for himself to take over the throne of his father while his father was yet alive. We also notice that Amnon did not see anything wrong in lusting after his own half-sister. So these children were brought up thinking that they were entitled to do every and anything that their hearts panted after. So that's one of the dangerous consequences of indulgent fatherhood. When the children are so indulged, they go into the world feeling that they're entitled to every and anything. The second consequence of indulgent fatherhood is embittered, vengeful hearts. The hearts of the children become embittered because of those who have been indulged, who have committed crimes against their siblings. So we see Absalom, two years, bitter hearts. He murdered. He still came back. Three further years, bitter hearts. We see Amnon. They, they had degenerated hearts that had become vengeful. And so, whereas the Bible encourages us, vengeance is of the Lord. But when a father is indulgent and just allows, you know, the home to run riot, the hearts of the children become embittered. The hearts of the children become vengeful. The third consequence of indulgent fatherhood is inordinate ambition. Inordinate ambition because the children have not been constrained. The children's appetites have not been contained. So the tendency to go after things that don't rightfully belong to them is very high. So inordinate, inordinate ambition. Absalom craftily stole the hearts of his own father's subjects. It's recorded in 2 Samuel chapter 15, verses 1 to 6. He will go around people. They are supposed to bow to him as the king. So he said, no, 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 don't do that. Just bring your hand, let me kiss it. And he says to them, oh, you will not be on this long queue if only my father David will allow me to be judging you. And he stole his own father's heart. Inordinate ambition. And then he further went to conspire to overthrow his own father. 2 Samuel 15, 10 to 12. So it's a dangerous consequence of indulgent fatherhood because it makes the children to have inordinate ambition that can destroy them just as it destroyed Absalom. The fourth consequence of indulgent fatherhood is unhindered downward spiral of character. The children just go from bad to worse. As we see in the case of Absalom, he went from bad 
to worse. He moved from bitterness to vengeance, from vengeance to murder, from murder to conspiracy, and eventually it led to his death. When children are overindulged, there is destruction waiting for them. Another consequence of indulgent fatherhood is family loss, disasters, public disgrace, and embarrassment. In the record of David as a father, his only daughter, Tema, was raped, remained desolate, never married. His firstborn son, Amnon, was murdered. The secondborn son, Absalom, was killed. He himself was almost dethroned, disgrace and embarrassment. As we begin to, you know, package this whole thing about indulgent fatherhood, it is very important for us to ask the question, what exactly is the antidote for indulgent fatherhood? What are the remedies? Number one, in order to avoid being an indulgent father or to repent from being an indulgent father, what we need to do? Number one, teach and train. It's recorded in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. New International Version. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. So, a father's duty is to teach the children the fear of God in their formative ages, not when they have grown and it's difficult. It is important for fathers to establish spiritual and moral codes in the hearts of the child. That's the purpose of the training. The second antidote for indulgent fatherhood is to discipline in love. Proverbs 22:15. Folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline will drive it far away. If only David had disciplined his children, he could have driven that foolishness far away from the heart of Amnon before his destruction. You see, in the home, rules and codes that are set morally, when they are broken, the father, even the mother, must execute the consequences. Even if it is done lovingly, children must be held accountable for wrongdoing. Proverbs 19, verse 18. Proverbs 19, verse 18. Discipline your children. For in that there is hope. Do not be a willing party to their death. You see, there's hope for a child that is being disciplined. But a child that is not being disciplined is headed to destruction. So it is the responsibility of the father supported by the mother to ensure there's discipline in the home, even done in love. Revelations 3.19a, Revelations 3.19a, even God the Father says, those whom I love, I discipline. Now, what's the third antidote for indulgent fatherhood? Engage on issues of the heart. Fathers cannot afford to be absent-minded. They cannot afford to run away from issues of the heart. They have to engage with their sons and engage with their daughters. Ephesians 6, 4. Ephesians 6, 4 says, Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. So, teach the children. Talk about the case of their heart. Last but not the least, be an example. Because your children will in imitate the parents' actions. They will not do the directives unless they are not in dissonance. So John 13, 15 says, For I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. These are the crucial antidotes. And when matters of the heart come up, deal with them decisively. Don't ignore character issues like disobedience and rebellion. Do something about it immediately. Urge the children to yield to God's pattern. Amnon and Absalom and Adonijah, they had rebellious hearts and they could have been changed through proper attention and engagement by their father. Lastly, please, fathers be available in the lives of your children. As we conclude today's episode, I'd like to remind us that we have examined the portrait of an indulgent father. We have looked at the consequences. We have looked at the preventive measures. 
it is important to note that David was not a complete write-off as a father. He did well with Solomon. He taught Solomon the fear of God is documented in Proverbs 4, verses 3 and 4. He also taught Solomon what it takes to be a man, what it takes to be a leader. Check it out in 1 Kings chapter 2, verses 2 and 3, as well as 5 and 9. Now, fathers are crucial. You are too crucial to be indulgent. You are too crucial to be neg negligent. The consequences can be very devastating when fathers are negligent or when fathers are indulgent. We pray for every indulgent and negligent father today that the almighty God will cause these fathers to have a change of heart. We pray for fathers and fathers-to-be that the wisdom of God will cause them to receive and rise up to their duties as Christian fathers to reflect God's fatherhood traits. Till I come your way next week, I want you to please be reminded that we shall be continuing this series on fatherhood. And next week, we'll be looking at neglectful fathers. Please join me. It promises to be an exciting one. This is Wonola Detayo, the Shaper. Shalom. Thank you.